Hello everyone, and welcome to this Dom Labs tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a Perlin noise map with mountains and rivers. So, what we're going to do is, I have a scene with nothing in it, and I'm going to right click and create an empty game object. I'm going to name this the map generator. And on this map generator, I'm going to add a component, and it's going to be a script. And the script name is going to be Perlin noise map. Click create and add. And then, once my Unity reloads, I'm going to right click, edit script, and it will open up inside my choice of coding editor. Up at the top, I'm going to create a few variables. First one's going to be a public game object named water tile. Next one's going to be a public game object called grass tile. And then, public game object called mountain tile. These are going to be the three tiles. Water is going to be low, mountain is high, and then grass is right in the middle. So we can see where the high and low points of our map are. So we are also going to need a public integer and this is going to be the width of our map. I'm going to set this to be 20. I'm going to create a public int and it's going to be the height of our map. I'm going to set this to be 20 also. I'm going to create a public float, and this is going to be the Perlin noise scale. I'm going to set this to be 5. And then we're also going to need a private int. It's going to be offset x, and then a private int offset y. Now all of these variables will do something, but for right now, we have to create a private void called generate map and this will generate a map for us so now we need to get all the points and place either a water tile a grass tile or a mountain tile on it so we're going to do a for int i is equal to zero i is less than the width and then i plus plus this is just looping over all of the widths in our Thing. So if we have 20, then it will loop over 20 times, and if we have 30, it will loop over 30 times. So now we need to loop over all of the height. So we're going to do an int b is equal to 0, b is less than the height, and b++. Now we have these, now if we have, we have the i and b coordinates for our width and our height. So let's, we're going to create a float x chord, and this is going to be a float of the x, or the, the parentheses, and then float, and this is going to be i times scale plus offset x. Then we'll do this for the y, so float y coordinate is equal to float b times scale plus offset offset y. Then we need to run this through a Perlin noise generator. So what we're going to do is we're going to get first we're going to take this i and first divide it by our width and then the b we're going to divide this by our height and then we're going to get a float called noise and this is going to be math f dot perlin noise with our x coordinate and our y coordinate now we need to create a few more variables up at the top to see whether this tile is going to be a water tile or a mountain tile this noise is going to be either a number between a 0 and a 1 so let's create a private float and this is going to be water range and I'm gonna set this to be 0 0.2 and then I'm gonna create a private float and this is going to be called mountain range and I'm gonna set this to be 0 0.6 we can actually make these public so we can see them in the inspector and change them in there so we don't have to go back into the code but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to check if our noise 
is less than our water range, then we are going to set the tile that we are going to put at this position to a water tile. So right before this, we're going to create a game object and it's going to be tile to place. And if noise is less than water range, then tile to place is going to be set to water tile. Then we have to do another if and else statement. So else else if the noise is greater than the mountain range, if that is true, then the tile to place will be equal to the mountain tile. And then else, so if all of these are false, then we are going to take the tile to place and set this equal to the grass tile. Now, this just makes sure that if it's high, then it's going to be a mountain tile. If it's low, it's going to be a water tile. And if it's in the middle, it'll be a grass tile. So now we're going to instantiate tile to place. And it is going to need a place to a place to put it. So we're going to do a new vector two with the X chord and Y Y chord. So it places it at the right spot. And then we also have to put a quaternion. So we'll put quaternion.identity. And then what we're going to have to do, what we are going to have to do is we're going to have to create another private void and this is going to be the offset position. And then this thing is going to set offset x is going to be a random dot range between 0 and some very large number. Now offset y is equal to a random dot range between 0 and another very large number, something like this. And this is just because if we didn't do this, then our Perlin noise would look the same every single time because the Perlin noise is just the same, but it's different in different places. So if we offset our positions by a random, by something random, then it will look different every single time. So in start, we're gonna call offset position, and then we're gonna call generate map. And now, if we go back inside of Unity, we will be able, we can go to our map generator and it's going to look for a water tile, a grass tile, and a mountain tile. And we're going to have to create this. So we're going to go to 2D object, sprite, and square. I'm going to name this my water tile. And I'm just going to set it the color to be blue, just so I know it's a water tile. Then I'm going to duplicate this, name it my grass tile, and then make the color green so I know it's a grass tile. And then I'm gonna duplicate again, duplicate it again and then name it mountain tile. And then for the color, I'm going to do a gray just so I know that it, it's a mountain, like a mountain top. Then if we highlight all of these, drag them into our project files and now we have prefabs of them. We can delete them from the scene and then inside the map generator script for water tile, We'll just drag in the water tile. For grass tile, we'll drag in the grass tile. And mountain tile, we'll drag in the mountain tile. Right now these widths are 20 and 20, and these scales I think are nice. If you don't if you would like to make a bigger map or would like to change the scale of the Perlin noise, feel free to do so. But right now, if we click play, then it we're not gonna be able to see it because our my camera is too small. So I'm gonna change the size to something around 20 for my main camera and move it over just a bit. And now I'm going to click play. And then once my Unity has loaded, you'll see that we have nothing in here. And that is because inside of our code, we have this new vector two at X coordinate and Y coordinate, and we are just offsetting that. So instead we're gonna change this to I and B. And that should fix our problem. So now when we go back inside Unity and click play, it will show us our Perlin noise map, just like this. You can visualize these mountains as something high and then these 
blue rivers as something low. Now, I'm just going to add a little something so that whenever I click my mouse button, it gives us a new map. So what I can do for that is create a private list of game objects and name these tiles and it's going to be a new list of game objects. This is just creating a list. Now down here, when we instantiate this, I'm going to set this equal to a variable. So I'm going to do game object tile is equal to the tile that we just instantiated. And then we do tiles dot add tile. Now this just adds the tile to our list of tiles so that inside of update, I'm going to check if input dot get mouse button down and then zero. So if if I push the right mouse button, then what I'm going to have to do is for each game object tile in tiles. So this is just looping over every single tile in our tiles list, and I'm going to destroy the tile. And then after this, I'm going to do tiles dot clear. So if there's no more tiles in the list, then I'm going to call offset position and generate map again. Now this would just make it so that whenever I click my mouse button, it will generate a new map. So I don't have to click the play button over and over again. So now when I click the play button, we can see that I have a map right there and I click the mouse button and the map changes and I can click through and these are all the different maps. You can see that there's sometimes a lot of green there's usually a lot of green, and if, but if I want to change that, I can change the water range to higher, to something about 0 0.5. That means everything, most things will be water. And you can see that the water is overtaking almost everything. If I want to change this down to be 0 0.1, then there will not be a lot of water. The mountain range, if I change it to 0 0.9, then not a lot will be mountain. But I think the values that we did in the beginning were pretty good. So 0 0.2 and 0 0.6. 0 0.6 gives us a nice variety of different things. And this scale, if I set this to be 10, then we will just get little less things. If I set the scale to 1, then we'll just get larger rivers and mountains. And this is good if I've changed, changed the height to something like 100. Then I get a big map. I can go to the scene. And you can see that there is just a very, very large mountain right there. And that is because the scale is very high. But if I set the scale back to five, then if I go back out to scene view, you can see that we have a nice looking little terrain map here. And with that, this tutorial is finished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please leave a like and a subscribe because it really helps out a ton. Thank you.